on your map followed the route from Foking Village to Red House Farm through the Devil's Dyke. Pat and Jenny are at Foking and they're going to follow this same route. You will remember that it started along the road through the village. The road rises steeply. It crosses the 200 foot contour near the church. With the church on the left, you will remember that they must take the right hand road and follow this for about a quarter of a mile until it is crossed by a track. Here they leave the road. Since this track is bounded by hedges, it is marked on the map with continuous lines. The hedge is continuous along the west side and the wind pumps can only be seen by climbing the bank. This is the track junction which you saw on the map. The route follows the short track to a small farm. At this farm, the track ends. In order to avoid passing through the garden, they walk round the boundary which is marked on the map by a continuous line. Above the farm, they reach the open country. Ahead is the large coombe that you saw on the map. They are crossing the 300 foot contour in order to reach it. Here is the coombe in the face of the scarp slope. On the eastern edge of the coombe, they turn and climb the slope, crossing the contours on the map almost at right angles. At the point where they reach the track, they are 500 feet above sea level. From the path, they can see the contrast between the steep scarp slope, close contours, and the flat country, widely spaced contours. The contours are much closer together towards the top of the hill. You can see that the hill is steeper. By the time they have reached the top, they are 700 feet above sea level. Fulking, 100 feet below. 
We will now stop the projector and look at the map. We have reached map reference 258111. The contours on the map are more widely spaced at the brow of the ridge. Although the girls are now at the highest point on their walk, this convex brow hides the route that they have taken. This area was once fenced, shown on the map by a continuous line and the remains of the fence can still be seen. The girls leave this area and walk in a northeasterly direction parallel to the contours. They are now going to walk down the steep side of the Devil's Dyke a dry valley. This is a convex slope at the top and an extremely steep even slope at the bottom. Notice that you cannot see the bottom from this point. The contours are fairly close at the top and very close at the bottom. The slope is therefore at first convex and then even and very steep. They can see the bottom when the slope is even. We can identify a valley by V-shaped contours pointing to the higher land. Behind them is the round head of the valley. It is a concave slope. The contours are closer together at the top. Ahead, you can see a shoulder of land 400 feet high and almost flat topped, projecting from the side of the valley. The higher slopes of the valley that you saw on the map, 500 to 600 feet, widen and on the east grow less steep. Continuing along the bottom of the dike, they turn north to join the track which has come down from the shoulder. Between the two marshy lakes passes the 250-foot contour. This point is the lowest on their route. Turning to the right after the lakes brings them onto the footpath to Saddlescombe. They have now reached the road. We will stop the projector and look at the map. We have reached map reference 271115. From this point, 
we can clearly see the 400 foot high shoulder projecting into the dry valley with the high side of the valley behind. The two girls walk in a northwesterly direction along the road. They turn sharply to the right into the lane which passes through the hamlet of Saddlescombe. This round pond is marked on the map. To get to it, they went a short distance off their route. A gentle slope rises to the southwest. The lane through Saddlescombe keeps almost level, a little above the 400 foot contour. The large farm with its many buildings dominates the village. This track junction is by the last house in Saddlescombe. They climb the gate at the foot of the steep slope of West Hill. Turning left, they follow the 500 foot contour just above the track which follows the edge of the arable field. They keep at this height to the north of the coombe, still following the line of arable land. This side of New Timber Hill is a gentle slope. They cross the contours at long intervals. 600 feet. Six hundred and fifty feet. This is almost the top of the hill. Here, near the top, is a good place to rest. Around them are growing flowers typical of the chalklands. Rock rose. Time, orchids, and a variety of meadow sweet. The top of the hill is just over 650 feet and is almost level. You will remember that there are no contours rising above 650 feet over a large area, the highest point being only 14 feet above this. From this point, the girls check their position. Looking back, they can see the saddle that gives Saddlescombe its name. And in the distance, the top of the Devil's Dyke. The girls have now reached another part of the scarp face. The contours are very close, and in places, the hill is almost precipitous. You will remember that these slopes were shaded with green on the one inch map, showing that the hill is wooded.
Contours almost touching mean a very steep slope. Steeply wooded hills such as this one are called hangers. Chalk soil is very slippery. The girls are now crossing the 500 foot contour, 150 feet below the top of the hill. They can see their destination, Red House Farm, 250 feet below them, with the quarry in the background. At 400 feet, they reach the track leading to the main road. The beginning of this track is still steep, crossing two contours close together. Near the road, it flattens out, the contours being wide apart. They have now reached the major road A281. Turning off this road, the track descends very gently, crosses the 250-foot contour, and ends at Red House Farm. Having left Fulking after lunch, they reach the farm in time for tea.